Hey everybody, welcome to Tony D's podcast. I have the iPod, iPad here, so let's get to it. Um, the big story, of course, is uh, Glenn Greenwald. Two big scoops. Um, one, the NSA thing, which confirmed basically everything that any libertarian or anybody who's been following these issues already knew. Uh, the NSA is listening to your, uh, reading your emails and collecting data on everybody, not just, uh, you know, suspicious people. So whether or not you agree with the plan, um, well, actually, whether or not you agree uh, with the, uh, the idea of privacy, um, the idea that you should expend all these resources to corral all this information and then have to spend additional resources to sift through it, um, to me, seems counterintuitive. Uh, it makes more sense to just go after people you have suspicions of. I mean, uh, clearly the guys in the Boston bombing were suspicious. The Russians had given us a heads up. Uh, but meanwhile, we're chasing leads on literally millions of people in the United States. So there you have it. Um, the other big thing that he revealed, and I, and I think it's very interesting that Glenn cracked both of these. I'm a big fan of his. Uh, read his column in The Guardian. He used to write for Salon, now he's at The Guardian. You know, it's amazing he's not picked up by an American newspaper or an American uh, uh, network. Um, but he also just published this um, presidential directive or whatever the hell it's called, um, where the Obama administration is now going to target uh, people for cyber attacks as well. Um, which is stupid on a lot of levels. Number one, um, there's no guarantee that these targeted cyber attacks will just stop at the people targeted. I mean, viruses get out of hand. And if uh, one gets out of control and knocks out, you know, some systems overseas, it could knock out some other systems o overseas, it could screw up our allies, and then it could come here and, and screw things up here. Wouldn't surprise me a bit if, uh, you know, they launched a bunch of attacks and then they had a problem you know, stopping the virus. Uh, or, the virus gets there, sure it knocks out a few things, but the computer guy's there, retool it, send it back, ten times worse. Um, you know, it's just, it just seems that everything's about attack, attack, attack. And it's a poor strategy. Especially when you're number one. I mean, when you're number one, the last thing you want to do is attack. When you're the last remaining superpower, um, attacking is desperation. It's desperation to stay number one. And, um, you know, if you're winning a game of risk, you don't necessarily have to keep attacking everybody. Um, if you hold on to your borders long enough, you're going to win because you have more resources than anybody else. Um, so, anyhow, the media here, of course, is finally starting to cover it. And I think that's interesting because the AP scandal seems to have shaken loose a few things. Uh, it seems that maybe some of the major networks are a little interested that they are being spied upon. Only a little, though. Um, not seeing really the average Joe giving a crap. Um, Although I will say this, I go on Reddit a lot, and normally uh, headlines like this get voted down in the politics room, and uh, this time it's voted up. So maybe things are changing, I don't know. Um, let's check the headlines, another shooting, I mean, these are really, I think, uh, you know, blown, blown a bit out of proportion in the news. I mean, this is the 
the top story um, and it just feels like you know first there's shootings all the time in Philadelphia there's shootings all the time in New York uh, there's shootings in really bad sections of the of, of the major cities in the United States and they get treated very sort of oh hum you know some drug dealers killed themselves and what's the big deal uh, it just seems that you know when people get shot up in a nice white suburban situation like a college campus people go crazy I mean it's bad it's horrible um, but it's also horrible it's it's weird too that at the same time there are people being killed by these flying robots all over the world thanks to our tax dollars and that hardly gets uh, any coverage here maybe I'm being unfair because this I'm looking at the US news but uh, and this is the US so maybe that needs to be up there I don't know uh, it's the top story right now along with uh, Paris Jackson suicide attempt and um, you know a bunch of other stuff the internship being reviewed I don't know for some reason under health President Obama defends surveillance programs in San Jose speech I don't know why that's under health, but uh, it's certainly a news story. It just seems to me, though, it's interesting that people are up in arms about this now, and uh, this kind of stuff just doesn't get enough, um, you know, enough play. So, anyhow. That's the big news stories. Um, you notice I didn't really have any uh, video of Wizard World. I actually shot some, but I was kind of in a cranky mood, and uh, I don't know. I, I it was mostly me complaining. I I, I think uh, I think it was a, a decent show. It was definitely well run. Uh, the Wizard World people were fantastic in Philly this year. I cannot stress enough how organized they were, and. Um, Sorry, it's my iPad. Uh, how organized they were and how wonderful they treated me. They gave me uh, discounted parking. Um, my panel was, you know, perfect, ready to go. I had a bottle of water, had multimedia all set. I had a tech guy uh, to help me. Um, you know, that was top notch, I thought. Um, it w the weird thing was, it's become more of an autograph show. So the fans. Uh, weren't as uh, interested in comics, I guess. I don't know. There was a lot of costume people, and I think costuming, uh, cosplay is becoming a big thing now, and uh, it's it never was that big at Wizard World. Actually, I don't remember seeing very many people at Wizard World dressed up. There would be a few heroes, you know, guys in hero costumes, but they were pretty far and few between. Now, you know, I would say there was good, you know, 200 people dressed up. I don't know. It was hard to tell. I was stuck at my table all day. And um, some of the costumes are very elaborate. I mean, the cosplayers are talented people. But all these new people sort of getting into it kind of don't know the etiquette. And the etiquette is, uh, especially if you're some smoking hot chick, look, you're going to get your picture taken everywhere you go. So go to the areas where you can do that. If you have a table, stay at your own table. Don't come to my table in full costume and then expect to be able to have a conversation with me. You can't because every 10 seconds we're going to get interrupted by some guy who wants to take your picture. The other thing is too, if you're a picture taker, just take the damn picture, okay? Um, you know, I realize you really want these pictures, but I mean, we had guys on the floor with lights. They were posing people. I mean, it was it was getting a little out of hand. And if you're going to do all that, at least take 
the costume person aside to an area. And there was plenty of area. I mean, these were wide aisles, and the main, I was like off a main aisle, and the main aisle was huge. So, I mean, there was more than enough room to do that stuff. I don't know, it just annoyed me a little bit. You know, I, I do Dragon Con all the time, and that's a great costume show, and I never had that problem. I mean, I just never had the problem. Part of part of it is at Dragon Con, I think, so many people are in costume. You know, there's not a lot of guys with cameras, really, uh, or they know the etiquette better, I guess. But it just seemed like there was so many people with damn cameras out, and uh, and I really don't understand autograph people at all. You're gonna pay the door to get in, then you're going to wait in line hours, then you're going to buy a photo and pay for the autograph. I mean, it's a lot of money just to get a guy's autograph. You know, I mean, I guess if that's what floats your boat, whatever, but seems to me that's a lot of money you could spend on, I don't know, the DVD of the movie the guy's in, or the comic that he draws, or you know, something that's a little more substantial than the guy just scribbling across. I guess that's just for me because I autograph comics all the time. And I, you know, I actually had a guy ask me, do you charge for autographs? And I'm like, oh, no, why would I do that? And, uh, you know, as desperate as I was for cash on some of the days, it all worked out on Sunday. But as, as much as I want to make money, I feel weird about charging for my autograph. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm weird. I, I, if somebody wanted my autograph that badly, would I charge? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe if like the line was going to just be so horrendous, I needed to cut it down somehow. But uh, you know, I and I've seen these guys sign stuff. You know, back in the heyday when comics were huge, and they were the thing in the early '90s. You know, I. I knew very popular guys who just would scribble, you know, they would, it would just become a blur after a while because they were constantly signing. So it's like, you're not even getting a really good signature, you know, uh, because there are dealers who, you know, they uh, buy and sell these autographs and they authenticate them. So I can't imagine like, you know, if you get the autograph of Norman Reedus, and you just happen to catch him somewhere and you get a really, you know, one-time autograph, he just signs that one that day, that's going to be very different from Norman Reedus's autograph after he signed like 500 pictures and he's got the same Sharpie in his hand and he's just signing and signing and signing. So, I don't know. I don't know if an autograph guy could authenticate that. But anyhow, that's why I don't have any footage. Uh, I was also stuck at my table, so I couldn't really walk around and uh, get footage of anybody. And um, there was some cool stuff. I would say one cool thing I did saw: somebody brought a really uh, nice dog, one of those old yellery type dogs, and uh, uh, she was dressing the dog up in costume. And the dog actually seemed to kind of enjoy it and enjoy the attention. So that was kind of funny. Uh, and there were a lot of little kids who were very cute. Uh, there was a mother and daughter who were dressed. The, the mother was dressed as Catwoman and the daughter was dressed as Poison Ivy and she was just as cute as a button. It was funny. Uh, and she was so excited to be there. So, But then on the flip side of that, I saw parents who were obviously dragging their kids to this thing and the kids just looked miserable and bored. Um, so, I don't know. And and then you got these, these uh, parents who bring their babies, which I I just don't understand. Look, if you have a baby, you stay home with the baby until the baby can walk, okay? You don't come to a public place where all there is to do is walk and stand in line and go shopping and bring a baby because then you end up doing your baby bullshit there. And I don't see how you could really enjoy the show. And it's definitely annoying to have these giant baby carriages, uh, you know, and the babies are reaching up and trying to grab stuff off the table. I don't know. I, I, I'm i sorry. I'm ranting. It was a good show. I did have a good time. I don't want to think. I don't want you to think it was a bad show. It was really well run. 
and 99% of the fans are great. A couple of them just annoyed me at that show. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I haven't done shows, quite frankly. I don't know. Maybe the scene's changing. Maybe I'm getting old. I don't know. Um, our sponsors this month on the Webcomic Factory are randomcomics.net for all your print comic needs, uh, mydigitalcomics.com for all your digital comic needs, and of course, uh, Gameplay Gear Wear, uh, which has a great line of video game t-shirts. You can go to the site, and um, all the links are on the left side, your left, my right, of the website. And you'll see the three squares. Please click them. Uh, clicking them helps us. You're helping us by helping them. Uh, what else? Uh, we have a new webcomic in the works. Can't tell you about it yet, but already I think we have four strips in the can. So excited about that. Um, there has been some changes to the schedule. They're not really all that permanent. Uh, just, you know, it's summertime. People are taking off. Um, we got a, I got a little behind on things uh, script-wise. I'm trying to catch up. So uh, there was a bit of a jumble on the schedule, but don't sweat it. Uh, everything, you know, we haven't lost anybody uh, on the webcomic factory in a while. All the artists are in, and uh, we have plenty of comics. Uh, actually, our only problem now is uh, how we get all these comics in. We, like, have more than seven. Um, you know, being turned into me now, and uh, so we, like I said in a previous podcast, we may double up on Mondays or another day. I don't know. We've never had this problem, really. I think we had it like one other time for like two weeks. Um, so right now, I'm just sort of riding it out, and when people need a break, you know, we can, we got plenty of comics, so it's nice to have that break. Uh, it's it's been a little hard on me trying to get everything written. Uh, for various reasons. It's just summer and there's a lot going on. Doing a show really kills me. I, I can't really write at a show. You know, doing a comic book convention for four days, it just kills me for those four days. I can't, uh, I definitely can't write at the show. And usually when I'm home, I'm just like mentally exhausted. So it's hard to write. Um, but, you know, everything's on the site has been great. Hits have been up. Thank you so much for your support. Um, I know we promised another Kickstarter. Gosh darn it, we're working on it. Um, we are, we've got some stuff in the works. We're still trying to figure out how to do it. We have the numbers from last time, but we're actually trying, want to try something a little different for the next Kickstarter. Not sure if it's going to work yet, so uh, just give us some more time. Please be patient. And in the meantime, I guess that's about it. So thanks for tuning into the podcast. And um, one of these times I'm going to have a guest or an email to answer. I don't know when. Um, I'll be, speaking of a podcast, I'll be doing a podcast on June 11th. Um, so look on the website for that. And uh, that's about it. Okay, Tony's Media Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.